Hello guys, welcome to a new video where I'll be sharing with you guys my editing process as well as my train of thoughts while editing. I think this will be a good way to show my perspective on why I make certain adjustments as well as choose certain colors in my images. And as you guys can see, I'm using Epson Scan. I like Epson Scan because it's it, it just gets the job done for me and it's such an easy software to use and make adjustments. And I don't really use coloring in Epson because I do that all in Photoshop. So I, my idea is to just get a flat scan. And the reason why I want a flat scan guys is because it's easy to adjust shadows as well as adjust colors and just get the best results out of that. And when exporting, I export as TIFF because it's the closest thing to a RAW file, which is which allows you to have more flexibility when making adjustments. So now we're gonna make our way into Photoshop. And first thing I wanna do is start adjusting the shadows, the highlights, and get the whole mood of the photo. And to do this, I'm gonna use a levels layer as well as I'm gonna change the levels layer to luminosity. And what this does is pretty much lets me um, selectively adjust the RGB individually so I'll be able to adjust the reds, green, blues um, individually. And like I mentioned earlier the idea for this whole shoot is to add a little bit of mood and I noticed that the image is well overexposed which added a big highlight. There was a light behind them which is adding a big highlight behind um, Aisha which is really cool so I just want to lower that a little bit. The second tool I'll be using is a curves adjustment layer. Um, the curve adjustment layer also will have luminosity, but the reason why I'm using the curves adjustment is because with the hand tool, I'm able to make precise adjustments by just clicking on them. I'm a visual person, so sometimes I'll be like, oh, underneath the chin, there's too much shadows or like there's too much shadows underneath the eyes. So I wanna pull that up and get the precise point that will get that done as you guys can see. Now that I'm done with the basic shadow and highlight adjustments, I'm gonna jump straight into the colors because I wanna make sure these colors affect my shadows and highlights really well. This is just still rough estimate, but this is gonna give me a good idea of my colors. And my tool of choice for my colors is the color balance tool, which is really, really good. I think this is probably the best tool I've really come across and have gotten to use for this very purpose. And the reason why I like this tool is because it adjusts colors really smoothly. It balances all the colors out instead of just sliding into one option to just say, oh, I want reds. It will slide from the blue to the red and actually adjust it without taking out the color completely. And that is very, very huge. And for this image, because it's a couple shoot and it has love, I want to add reds to the whole image to give it a red feel because red is a symbol of love. And when people do see the image, it will also play a trick on their eyes to just be like, wow, they're in love or like anything of that sort based off of that color because it's again, it's a symbol of love. And the other good thing about this is that this is gonna really complement her skin and make it glow a bit and make it look very, very rich. Luckily, Johnny was not in focus, which made adding the reds a lot easier, but normally it would affect his skin tones, which is something I would not like because he has a lot of reds in his cheeks and his whole face could get red. And yeah, so luckily there's nothing to affect that, but that's the whole idea. I want to convey that they're in love and this is a perfect moment. This is the most divine moment in their relationship or whatever. Guys, I'm gonna bring the saturation back up to get that richness out of the skin and to get those colors out and to make it even more dreamy. Now that the coloring is done, guys, I like to start retouching and cleaning up the image from the dust particles and scratches or whatever it might be. And to do that, I like to just copy the base layer because I want an original image to go back on just in case I make adjustments that I can't go back on. To do my retouching guys, I use a Wacom tablet. This is such a huge tool for my retouching and editing because it has a pe pressure sensitive pen and the whole tablet is pretty much my whole entire screen. So wherever my pen goes is where it's pretty much identified where the, where the 
where the screen is long story short i just don't know how to explain it but like if you know how to explain it comment down below but check this out this is a really good tool it's perfect for portraiture and everything that you really need because as you guys can see the the actual size of the brush is quite big but depending on how hard i press the effect will be in place and the tool that I'm using to do all this basic cleaning is the healing brush tool because it really does a good job just replacing things. And because most of the places that I want to adjust, they're very small. I don't really lose grain. It has a, it does a really good job of copying where the grain is and knowing that there was grain. But if I was to make a very big adjustment, the grain separation will be there. It will be like a big patch of clearness, which is weird. So luckily Aisha has really good skin so I don't really have to do many adjustments. I probably have to do more adjustments for Johnny. So now that I'm done cleaning up the image as you guys can see that there's a big highlight behind Aisha. There was a light above their washroom and that light is really giving a really really bright cast behind Johnny's neck and behind Aisha's head which is something i don't want so i'm going to flatten the image a bit more by using the exposure tool and the brightness tool it's pretty much the whole process from the beginning but just a little bit more enhanced and more focused on the highlights and guys one of my most favorite tools is the selective color tool um, this tool is really, really awesome for basic adjustments as well, and as well as like affecting the images in a different way. I like this tool because I could affect just the blacks, just the neutral colors, and just the whites, aka highlights. So this is a really good tool if you have too much highlights to pull those highlights back and to just tone down certain things you want to get to tone down. And again, the idea for this whole shoot, guys, is that I want to seem like I'm intruding. So because of that, I'm going to darken the image a bit and make it a bit more moody so that the red um, coloring, color grading will stand out a bit more. Pretty much that's the whole, whole entire image. Usually I would just copy this and copy it across all my images. And I'll show you guys some other images from the collection that are really awesome. I'll put them on the screen. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys really like this type of video, if you guys want me to continue, uh, comment down below guys and let me know. And also please turn on your post notifications because I'm no longer on Instagram or social media. I'm not able to notify guys you notify you guys when I do have a new upload. And by turning on post notifications, you'll actually get the upload right when it's done. And that's gonna really help me out and help you out to get all my new content on time and yeah thank you guys